In the Bible, there's an encounter of Eli and Samuel. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 3. And in this specific, let me give you a little back history, a short back history of Eli and Samuel. Samuel is actually an aide or helper to Eli. His mother brought him to Eli when he was a little child because his mother was barren. Okay? I believe his mother was Hannah and she was barren. She could not have any children. And one of the things that she promised the Lord was if he blessed her womb, that she will dedicate the child back to him. So she did keep her promise and brought the child to Samuel. I'm sorry, brought Samuel to Eli, who was a great prophet. He actually was, he walked with Elijah. And so she brought him to serve with Eli in the house of the Lord. So if you want to say like today, he would have been like his overseer. Eli was like an overseer and a mentor to Samuel, who was very young. You know, Eli was well into his, in his age and Samuel was a little boy at the time. So he's like a father or probably like almost like a grandfather to some degree, right? So I want to pose a question to you that the Lord laid in my heart. And it's in, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, there is an, uh, a, a, this is where Samuel keeps hearing what he later realized was the voice of God calling him. And he thought it was Eli calling him. So each time he would get up and he went into Eli and said, did you call me? You called me and, and, sent, and Eli told him no and sent Samuel back to bed. Samuel hears a voice again calling his name. He gets up the second time, goes to Samuel and say, I heard you call me. So after the third time, Eli perceives that this is the voice of God. This is God calling to Eli. And so he instructs Samuel and says, when you hear the voice of God again, you will answer and said, speak, Lord, your servant hears. Okay. And so after that, Eli, Samuel goes back to bed. He hears the voice again. He hears the voice of God. He responds as Eli instructed him. And so at this time, God gives Samuel a word which was actually going to be a it was a prophecy of chastisement and not only that of the wrath of God that was going to be coming upon Eli as a result of the wickedness that his sons were doing in the house of God you would have to read Samuel it's an exciting book it's quite riveting to get all the backstory of that now imagine poor little Eli I'm sorry Poor little Samuel trying to tell his mentor, the person he's always respected, telling him this word. And he was hesitant. But Eli insisted and said, you must tell me what was said. Do not hold back. And so Samuel told him what the Lord said. And Eli received. He received it, right? Now, the question I want to pose to you all is what if Eli had chastised Samuel and told him he didn't hear from God? What if Eli did not direct Samuel to answer the Lord when Eli perceived and knew that God was talking to him? When Eli perceived that God was talking to Samuel, what if he just said, just go to bed, ignore it? I'm here to tell you, the Lord still would have gotten his word. He would have got his word to, to Samuel regardless. But the main reason I'm saying this is because there are many people, there are many people who have this mentality that they feel by the virtue of their position. There are many people who have this seniority complex who feel that they have been in ministry or even if they're not in a church, that they've been a 
They have been a Christian longer than you. They've known God longer than you. They got saved before you. I've written a book before you. I've written a book and you haven't. That they feel as if God will not speak to you based on your age, based on how long you've been saved, and based on your family background. And based on other things they will not receive from you. And they, even when they perceive and they know that the anointing of God is on you. They're going to try to stop it. They're going to try to stop it. When God speaks to you and you share it with them, they, there are many leaders and many people who are quenching the fire of those who has God's anointing. When God places something in you, a word, they are quenching it. When God puts something in you that needs to be spoken and shared with the people, their leaders, that's quenching that spirit because they feel that, well, God didn't say anything to me. I didn't hear the voice of God, so there's no way God spoke to you. I didn't get that revelation, so there's no way that God told you that. I've been in ministry longer than you. There's no way God is telling you to do that. I've got many campuses and books and TV deals and TV shows and my own talk show, and I've been invited here and invited there. There's no way God spoke to you. I have a degree, you don't. You haven't been saved long enough. What are you talking about? You come from a poor family. You have a poor background. You, your sin is too great for God to speak to you this way. What if, what if Eli had shut Samuel down? What direction would Samuel have taken? I believe Samuel still would have been called and used by God, but there might have been a diversion. There might have been a delay. And it might have been something that would just hurt him in his heart. That God in his infinite power would have mended and would have brought him out and would have brought him forth. But what Samuel, what, what Eli did was he encouraged Samuel. He taught him. He realized that has nothing to do with how old he is and how much further along that he is. He knows that God will speak to and speak through whoever he chooses, regardless of their age, regardless of their background, regardless of their gender. He's going to speak through individuals. It could be a child that God would use. There is an encounter in the Bible where a donkey spoke and so, and the rocks cried out. So I'm here to tell you that if God can use a donkey, he can use anybody. There's too much jealousy and competition going on in the body of Christ. Whether you are physically in a church, on a home church, on a screen church, whether you are on a Zoom church, whether you are in any arena, prayer groups, whatever, it's too much jealousy. There's jealousy within um, intercessors. People are supposed to be praying for people. There's jealousy. You get jealous if someone can pray and maybe they have prophecy. You want to shut them down and tell them you can't prophesy. This is a prayer group and you got a second when God gives you a prophetic word. I don't even know what it is and God ain't spoke to me since we were wearing uh uh, you know, since we're wearing leg warmers and sweaty headbands. So because God is not speaking to them this way, they are putting a muzzle and quenching the fire and the anointing of God and others based on the fact that they are pulling rank. They are pulling seniority. They are saying, I'm the one that brought you to the Lord. How dare you give me a prophetic word? I'm the one that told you about God. I'm the one that brought you to this church. How dare you think that you can out do me when God is simply using you. God is not looking at how long the person's been here. He's looking at the heart. And sometimes it's not a matter of the heart. This is the person's call. But there's a lot of people that want to keep people and leaders want to do this too. And fellow believers, they want to keep people like puppet on a string. They want to decide when you move. And when you try to move, they want to yank you back because they're saying there's no way God is speaking to you. There's no way God told you that. There's no way God is going to use you like that. Oh, it's too soon for you to write a book. You haven't been saved long enough. It's too soon for you to write a book. Have you done this? They want to direct you, but in many ways, they want to keep you right under their thumb. 
There's a lot of people who you can't witness to your family because guess what? Your great great grandmama or whoever that you realize is or or, or your your grandmother who's been the family matriarch all this these years, you realize that she is over there on the back porch uh, uh, smoking cigarettes and drinking. Okay, that little flask was not holy water after all. And so, if you try to talk to her about that, she and the whole family is going to correct you because how dare you speak a word? What if God tells you something to speak to your grandmother? What if God speaks to you and tells you something to tell your parents who were saved? They have a church, or they are have been in ministry. They're well known. They're very successful. Whatever it may be, and they want to tell you, shut your mouth because when you was over there rolling around with Leroy or when you was over here out your mind I'm the one that prayed to God for your deliverance you are saved because of me you are where you are today because of my prayers uh oh what do you do when they start talking to you like that there are family members that's like that. They believe that they've labored for you, labored for you in prayer all these years, and your salvation is because of them. So they take on an ownership attitude with you. They have a license. They have this little manual that belongs to them because they feel like, I prayed you to salvation. I brought you to God. They're going to remind you when they laid hands on you when you were in the hospital. They're going to remind you of when you were losing it and they came to get you. And they failed to realize that in everything, God placed them to do a job that has nothing to do with them but him. Because if it wasn't them, it was going to be somebody else. But these individuals will feel like, no, I own you. I got the deed to your soul. I got the title to your soul. I got the title and the deed to your walk. You're bought and sold by me. And so don't you open up your mouth and say a word to me. Don't you try to correct me. Don't you try to speak truth because there's no way God's going to talk to you because he didn't run it by me. I want you to realize Whoever you are, God has called you. And a part of you being able to walk in confidence in him is being able to override the naysayers, which can be those who raised you, those who were teaching you, those who helped you in those dark times, and those who have been saved longer than you, that's been in ministry longer than you. God wants you to trust him. God wants you to trust him. Everybody is not going to be like Eli. That's going to encourage you to listen for the voice of God. Everybody is not going to encourage you like Eli did to Samuel to tell him, speak what God has spoken to you, no matter how bad it is and receive it when it's bad news or receive it when it's something that's going to edify the body. Everybody's not going to be like that because there's a lot of people that think that they own God, that they have some puppet strings to God, that they got God on a puppet string. So they expect and think that they can do the same thing to you because they've gotten to a place of being puffed up. They're starting to turn to themselves. God wants you to have confidence in the ability that he's given you. He wants you to have confidence in his word. The times are short. The days are shortening because his return is coming. I hear God saying my return is soon. So there is not going to be a lot of time to be wasting trying to play Kate and trying to get these individuals to accept you, to release you, to believe you, to believe in you. God is saying when I speak to you, you speak my word. Do what I've called you to do. God says, I have called you. I didn't tell Samuel to call. I didn't tell Eli to call Samuel. I call Samuel myself. And that's what God is doing with many people. He's called you himself. And if you find leaders 
a friend or a fellow believer that's trying to talk you out of talk you out of answering the call of God and seeking further on God for God and telling you need to check with A, B, C, and D first. This is not of God. Even those who mean well, God says there's certain things that requires no further examination. But you can test the spirit by the word of God. You can test the spirit through discernment. And God is saying the best way to learn is through the power of the Holy Spirit, by trusting God and seeking him and getting before him. There's many people, many, many, many people. If they were Eli today, will shut down somebody else. And those of you that's doing this, God's seen you. Repent. Repent. Stop getting in the way of what God is trying to do. And some of you, you have this position and you have this influence where you set other people against that individual, either to cause them to fall in line or to get them out of your church, to get them out of your ministries. There's too much jealousy in the body of Christ. And God is saying the things that you have done, the hurt and the pain and the, and the, and the compliance that you've received out of fear. God is saying, I will hold you accountable. Their blood is on your hand. There's a lot of jealousy in the body of Christ. A lot of jealousy in the body of Christ. Women, leaders who are women being very, 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 very wicked to other women. Jealousy, jealousy of their beauty, jealousy of their knowledge, jealousy of their youth, jealousy of their fire for God. And there is a need to control and consume and extinguish and even run them out of ministry. God says, I've seen you. But do you know that I've gone for that one sheep that you have disbanded and sent out? For the wolves, you're hoping that the wolves will destroy them. You're keeping tabs to see what's going on with them because you want to make sure that they are destroyed. But God said, before they're destroyed, you will be utterly destroyed. And you will stand before my throne. You will stand before me and give an account. And even now, some of you are getting recompense in your bodies. Some of you are getting recompense in your own mind because of the evil that you have done to other people. God says, I've seen it. This is all the Lord has given me today, my brothers and sisters. Those of you God has called you, please, I'm encouraging you, turn to him. Turn to him. Do not look at what men have done or said or how they've tried to hinder you because you're not going to be able to stand before God and say, well, this person did this, this person said that. God has said, did I not call you? Could you not have come to me? Was my hand not a strength? Did I not always keep a light on for you? Did I not faithfully come to your door and knock? Did I not make sure that you slept in perfect peace? Did I not pull and tug at your heart? We will be without excuse, my brothers and sisters. Answer the call. Answer the call of God on your life.